Um, next agenda item nine is the industrial authority presentation. Ms. Andrea Schreier. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you for allowing me to operate this building. Um, it's been a long time but also on behalf of the board and staff, we're thankful for everything that you do for our community. We know it's a thankless job at times, and it's very time consuming. So thank you all for that, the support that you give us, both for Jeff. Um, I thought I would just start off a little bit with talking about the Industrial Authority, uh, a little bit in its history. As you may be aware, the Industrial Authority's charter offers a broad mandate of many different economic development activities. However, we've historically always focused on three core areas, and those core areas are developing prospects and recruitment, um, retaining our existing industries, as well as working with them on expansions. And then the third one is developing real estate assets so that we can do uh, the before two mentioned items. Um, and as you may recall, um, we've used the bond that we got, the mill that we currently have, to purchase two new industrial parks which totaled to be about $13 million of investment back into the community's efforts for economic development. Um, the board at the time, we only had a little over 160 acres, and those were not contiguous, so we needed larger tracts of land in order to recruit the new industries and expand our existing ones. Um, as you may be aware, these are some of our target recommendations for our area, just to go over those briefly. We've always done really well, well in um, forest products, plastics, transportation equipment, and also in the logistics and distribution area. Some of the things that we're focusing on now in recruiting and developing are those specialty foods packaging and processing production areas, as well as um, working with corporate support services. So one of the, you'll notice a lot of the announcements that are coming out are headquarters or financial or back office space, um, developing those types of target markets as well. And we'll go through all of those. Uh, many times we get asked the question, do you wait for uh, prospects to come to you? And the answer is no, we do not. We actively get out in, um, outside of our community, within the state and outside of the state of Georgia. We do that from two ways. We do that regionally and we do it focused on Valdosta Lowndes County. So regionally we partner with our Joint Development Authority and the Southwest Georgia Chamber Council uh, through the Georgia Quail Hunt where we entertain um, or network with location advisors and other companies that are doing business in the state of Georgia and that are looking to do business in the state of Georgia. Uh, we also started our first marketing event to showcase our region through the South Georgia Classic where we bring in location advisors, companies that we're doing business with and that we want to do more with. Um, and then we also have started partnering together to make visits to location advisors throughout, and we do that together. It gives us more time in front of them. We go to different trade shows, and those are very strategic. We go with our existing industries to SEMA, with Stiga Auto Sports. Again, I mentioned we're focused on food processing, so we go to Pack Expo and Process Expo, which focuses on food and beverage. Um, and we also work to build relationships with our location advisors through these consultants forums and industrial asset management, and also in the state of Georgia. So a lot more of our projects that we're working on have coming to us directly instead of from companies are coming directly to us from location advisors. Um, also with our existing industry, here's a list of things that we do to work with them. Um, one of the things that has really been a great um, I guess partnership that we've been working on has been the foreign direct investment fee. Um, Joe joined us last week when the Department of Economics Development, Department of Economic Development, International Trade Division directors were here from 11 different countries. So um, we met with them. They heard from our existing industries that are already exporting and importing and that want to do more and go into emerging markets. So that's been a huge success for us. We've seen a lot of growth. Stita, um, talked about that at our last board meeting about how much he's grown and just added five to six million dollars worth of sales in his inventory based on a partnership that he just developed with China. Um, we also have our incentive program that we work on, but also trying to work with them on what they need from a workforce infrastructure perspective as well. 
Um, we get asked questions a lot about incentives and what all we offer, and there's about two pages of these that we offer, and all of these are resources that we can um, work with those companies on, whether it be from gap financing, um, tax credits, um, and then tax exemption as well. And these are some more um, incentives that we offer. We do work with them on tax abatements. I can talk more about that if you'd like. Um, the main reason for coming is to talk to you about the success that we had in 2013. Um, in the last six months, we've made 75 existing industry visits, and out of that, we've been able to identify, actually, it's more than this now. It's more like 15 expansion opportunities that we're going to be working on, so the numbers are greater than the dollar capital investment, the retain and create a job that you're looking at. Um, in the last six months, from a new and existing job creation, Home Depot created 120 jobs, Express Scripts created 125, of which they're looking to do another hiring process starting again in May, which would create another 100 jobs. And then we retained 75 jobs at Regal Marine. So Regal was struggling with the new models that were coming out and whether they would get one. And I am happy to say that they did get the new um, boat model, so we'll be retaining those 75 jobs. Um, we work with the state of Georgia, not just only them, but we get what's called requests for information. Um, and we use that as a gauge for what's going on in the state from a new activity perspective. So last year we had six of those. Um, and we're working to grow that number. The year before, we've had 15. So the new prospects have decreased, but like I said, we're doing more proactively to get out there and grow them. And then the Hamas Lower Project that we also worked on. Um, that's my presentation today to talk to you about a little bit about what we're doing. But also, if you have questions, um, I would really encourage you to visit our website. There's tons of information on there from demographics, research, existing industries, and employment numbers. And um, also, feel free to call me as well. Thank you, Chairman. Do we have any questions for Ms. Rodman? <coughs> yes. Um, as you know, many of the citizens, you know, they, uh, they just see one meal coming out of, you know, property taxes. And they often see all the parks and they ask the questions, you know, what are, what are the jobs? Um, uh, not to, you know, drift from that, but at the heart of it, do you have any numbers to go with where uh, some of these programs are that you're doing? Um, or the numbers? The cost. Because one meal is oh, just okay. under $3 million a year, okay. right? Right. So, out of say three million dollars a year mm -hmm. um, you know where are some of the funds I guess are well we actually we have our budget that is not approximately nine hundred thousand dollars to operate on that includes all of our recruitment marketing operations etc that we use for that but the majority of that money actually goes towards the bond money so while we you know worked on the 15 million dollar bond we also had to settle bonds from 1996 that we had taken out to um, allow for additional growth that we did with other industries. And so all of that has been consolidated. So we don't actually, it, we get $3 million, but a lot of that is debt service that we use. But I can get you numbers on that, absolutely. Okay, I appreciate that. That's kind of what I was hoping to see because the other presentations we received, they, they, they generally lay out where they spent their money and what happened. Okay, and I'll be happy to get that to you. Sure. Any other questions? I do, Mr. Chairman. Um, are there any specific industries that your enabling legislation prohibits you from uh, pursuing or I was kind of under the impression that retail wasn't as much of a of something you were allowed to do. I know at one time we were pursuing a fast pro shop, which mm -hmm. probably won't happen now. We have you know Gander and Sports Bar or uh, Academy Sports, but it, are there any industries that you guys are sort of prohibited from affecting either recruiting or retaining or assisting in relocation or is it open to any industry? Um, our legislation actually says that we can um, be involved in trades, which is what we're currently doing. Um, tourism, agribusiness, purchasing land, and um, so trade would be retail. So, I mean, we can do a lot with our charter and I can, I don't have it with me to go through it. But yeah, retail, trade, tourism, agribusiness. But just off the top of your head, just a just a knee-jerk reaction to that question. To your knowledge, there's not really any industry that you are prohibited from affecting one way or the other in terms of as long as it falls under the umbrella of what you're trying to do. Right. Okay. 
I have a question. Okay. Um, on page of the number, it's new and existing jobs, 330. Did I hear you correct? Is that was 330 jobs last month? That's six months. Six months. Seven new jobs in okay. the last six months. That's correct. 75 retained. So right. new jobs. New jobs minus the 75. 330 minus 75. Mr. Ryan, thank you very much. Certainly, you. Uh, we appreciate what you do. We know your board, your staff, um, the economic situation we've been in for the last seven years has been very difficult for everybody. Uh, I have, through the last year and a couple of months that I've been in this seat, I have uh, really learned a lot about economic development. However, I've got a long way to go, no doubt about it. But reality is, is that I have found out that the community also plays a huge part in this role because we get looked at all the time by folks that may be wanting to relocate to an area but we may get checked off before we ever have an opportunity to talk to these folks so again what we do in our community the appearance that our community has and what the picture that these folks out there looking at Val Austin Lambs County sees that's one of the first things that they're going to make that check. And if we're not looking great as a community, we won't have consideration that we need. But when we have the opportunity, I appreciate what y'all do. I know that you work very, very hard and you're very, very passionate about what you do. I just know it's a tough time for it. Thank you very much for that. I want to reiterate what the chairman just said as well. He and I were in a meeting up in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago in a in a industry class that we were taking part of our training and Hearing what other counties are doing and other areas are not doing, um, our industrial authority seems to be uh, one of the more progressive ones in the state compared to some of the things we heard that are not going on in other areas. So I agree with that as well. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say as well, and I'm sorry, I know we're trying to move on here, but um, you know, all these communities offer tax abatements. Everybody, not everyone, but a lot have land that paved roads going into those, those parks and some have spec buildings. Um, and I think that it is important for our, our citizens to know that, that when someone's looking at a community in Georgia, there are a lot of communities like ours that are offering tax abatements that are offering the same thing we're offering. So the tax abatements and those things are getting you a seat at the table. But it's quality of life people are looking at, it's graduation rates people are looking at. What kind of community are we? And if we are, if we are, always contentious with one another about various things, then they're gonna look at that and say, I don't wanna move there. Um, if we are if we are full of complaints but no solutions, then people are gonna look at that. So I am interested in, in us becoming a more solution-oriented community, um, join together to make these things happen, to, to assist our different authorities and our different, the people who are tasked with bringing uh, jobs here. And so it's a, it's a big picture, it's a big pie, and everyone in this room and everyone who might read about this meeting and everyone who who calls Lowndes County home is responsible for helping towards economic development, whether you are participating in uh, childhood uh, youth sports, making that better or, or that sort of thing. So that's sort of my soapbox regarding um, economic development. It's not just their job, it's, it's our job. <clears throat> Thank you very much. All right, at this time, um, we will I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the work session. Of course, we do have a special call meeting, and then following that, I'll ask for a motion to move into that meeting. So moved. Thank you. So moved.